Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Jazeera 119 latest weekly news. Here are the headlines details to be discussed shortly thereafter. 7th GCS Summit in Algiers, high-level working group meeting begins. President of the Republic arrives at Grace Mosque of Algiers to chair its official inauguration. Inauguration of Jem al-Jazeera, center of middle way, testified with Algeria's leading civilizational role. Government meeting several sectors on, on agenda. Security Council Algeria denounces Zionist occupation policy to stop Palestinians in Gaza. Gaza ceasefire deal with Zionist occupiers still not close, says senior Hamas official. International journalists on Zionist in Delhi and Egypt for access to Gaza. Deepening occupation, Turkey condemns Zionist entity on last day of ICJ's hearing. El takes central stage as Web Summit kicks off in Qatar, and Putin warns risk of nuclear war if West sends troops to Ukraine. Welcome back. The high-level ad hoc working group dedicated to preparations for the 7th Summit of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum, GECF, began meeting on Thursday at the Ablati Fahel International Conference Center, CIC, to prepare the draft Algiers Declaration, which is submitted to the extraordinary ministerial meeting on Friday for consideration and adoption by the Forum's Summit of Heads of State and Government on Saturday. At the GECF Extraordinary Ministerial Meeting, the energy uh, ministers are discussing the final version of the Algiers Declaration and related resolutions to be approved by the Forum's heads of state and government at the summit to be chaired by the President of the Republic, Abdel Najib Tabun. Jam al Jazeera, inaugurated Sunday by the President of the Republic, is intended to be a center for the path of Middle Way, testifying Algeria's leading civilizational role. The inaugural ceremony of the religious, civilizational, and scientific building took place in the presence of the rector of Jam al Jazeera, Sheikh Mahmoud Ma'moun al Husseini, who welcomed the President of the Republic at the entrance of the mosque and who was accompanied by the Minister of the Religious Affairs, Yusuf Bel Mahdi, and the Minister of Housing, Urbanism, and the City, Mahmoud Tariq Bel Aribi. The ceremony was also attended by the Speaker of the Council of the Nations, Upper House of Parliament, Salah Gujil, Prime Minister Nadil Arbawi, the Chairman of the Constitutional Court, Omar Bilhaj, the Chief of the Chief of Staff of People's National Army, General Said Chengriha, Chief of Staff of the Presidency of the Republic, Boualem Boualem, in addition to members of the government, advisors to the President of the Republic, senior state officials, representatives of the diplomatic corps accredited to Algiers, Imam and sheikhs of the years. The President of the Republic subsequently attended at the Lounge of Honor of Jam al Jazeera the screening of a documentary on various facilities of the civilizational and religious building. The President visited then all the structures of the mosque, namely the Museum of the Islamic Civilization, the Cultural Center with its lecture hall and its library, as well as the Higher School for Islamic Sciences, Dar al Quran, with its study halls and laboratories. At the library, the President of the Republic stressed the necessity for Jam al Jazeera to contribute to the enshrinement of the values of the moderation and the rejection of extremism and fanaticism. He ordered the library's officials to adopt clear rules in the validation of the works that will be exhibited. President Book called to provide the library with a reference book in various scientific specialties, stressing the importance of training in Islamic finance, economy, and law. At the end of his visit, the president performed the Dohar prayer with a companion delegation composed of senior state officials and members of the government, as well as scholars, imams, sheikhs of Zawiyas, and eminent intellectual and religious figures from the Muslim world. The Prime Minister Nadil Arbawi chaired on Wednesday a government meeting devoted to the monitoring of the progress of digitization operation of several sectors, draft executive decrees, and the communication on the revival of the National Agency for Support and Development of Entrepreneurship, the Prime Minister's officials said in a statement. 
Although Jack condemns on Tuesday evening in New York the policy of starving the Palestinians in Gaza, which is deployed by the Zionist occupier as a weapon of war, urge the United Nations Security Council to demand an immediate ceasefire in this territory that has faced barbaric aggression. Senior official Bessem Naim says there is space for flexibility, but Hamas wants a guarantee of a total ceasefire and the withdrawal of Zionist troops. Desperation grows in the besieged and bombard Gaza Strip, where children are drying due to dehydration and starvation spreads. Senior Hamas officials say that there is still a long way to go to the secure a potential ceasefire deal with Zionist occupier. UN humanitarian agency says humanitarian organizations systematically denied access to Gaza and the humanitarian aid and more than 50 international broadcast journalists have signed an open letter to Egyptian and Zionist authorities to call for free and unfettered access to Gaza for all foreign media. Correspondents and presenters from the main broadcasting outlets in the United States and the United Kingdom, including Sky News Foreign reporter Alex Crawford and BBC International editor Jeremy Bowen, joined the call to demand access to Gaza Strip. At least 30,000 people have been killed and 70,500 wounded in Zionist attacks on Gaza since October 7th. As the UN's top court holds in final day of hearings, more countries assert Zion's decade-old illegal occupation of Palestinian must end. Turkey has joined a large number of countries that have condemned Zionist decades-long occupation of Palestinian territories as International Court of Justice, ICJ. Turkey's deputy foreign minister was the first representative to speak on the last day of the hearing on Monday, cap in a week-long event that saw 52 countries and several international organizations testify to Zionist occupation of Palestine. The root cause of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, there can be no peace in the region. Palestinians seek recognition of their inalienable rights in their own land. And the blocks of flashing lights, entrepreneurs, investors, and business leaders converged in central Doha on Monday as Web Summit, one of the world's biggest tech conferences, opened in Qatar's capital. The event, held in the Middle East for the first time, brings together participants from dozens of countries who, ever for days, will be hoping to establish new connections, share insights, and secure fans. Thank you, Catherine. I'm grateful to be here in Doha with all of you today. One of the most fascinating things about technology is its ability to reveal human nature. The way we interact with our devices tells us a lot about ourselves. We are, by nature, storytellers. It's how we make sense of the world. Every selfie, status update, photo, and video we share adds a few more lines to the story that we are constantly writing and rewriting about ourselves. Russian President Vladimir Putin has warned of a real risk of nuclear war if the Western countries sent troops to fight in Ukraine during an annual address to the nation two weeks ahead of the presidential elections. Серьезно, необходимо укрепить группировки на западном стратегическом направлении, чтобы нейтрализовать угрозы, связанные с очередным расширением НАТО на восток, втягиванием в альянс Швеции и Финляндии. Запад спровоцировал конфликт на Украине, на Ближнем Востоке, в других регионах мира и продолжает лгать. Теперь вот без всякого смущения заявляют, что Россия якобы намеревается напасть на Европу. 
We wrap up with latest news of Cristiano Ronaldo, who was suspended for one match for obscene gesture in Saudi League game. Ronaldo who made the alleged gesture in response to El Shabab's fans' chance of Messi after their Saudi Pro League game on Sunday. That's all for today. Many thanks. Hope you have a great weekend. See you next week. Goodbye.